experiments um, the impairments to these strings have been determined by the paper cola on count and the new law is now that they're going to use E. coli and then the ammonia the ammonia criteria, exactly, thankfully. So, um, just understand that some of the things that we've made our decisions on and, and even planned around uh, are changing a little bit, so when you read through that, keep that in mind. How will that affect the, the kind of the next look at stream impairments? Do you know? I don't know yet, and, and I mean, I, can you, can you, so Gail, Gail talked about this, most recently, where at the at the, at, uh, the ACCG uh, economic I don't know how it was at Econ, but there's a natural resources policy committee meeting. Okay. And it was at the water quality standards. Uh, they're, they're likely to change for the ammonia criteria, uh, toxicity to aquatic life, and then the standard will go from fecal coliform um, to E. coli for fresh and. Um, something that's a very long word for Marie. I have, I, I have no, I have absolutely no information on that. I can. Um, I don't know if Jeff has yep. that, but that sounds real fresh to me. Yeah. It is it fresh. Um, and it just passed this session. So. It's a new rule from EPA. New rule from EPA. Yeah, 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 yeah. Out of this session, yeah. Out okay. of this session. Okay. Out of this session. Um, that's interesting because I know that'll come in. Obviously, that's going to be huge when yeah. we get into the next effort that's where right. we start modeling. That's right. Our, we got impairments down here that I don't know that you're going to know that that really does anything to other than um, keep us at the table trying to get these standards, trying to find out what, what might be contribution might be natural as opposed to something else. So I don't know that it changes a heck of a lot other than there's still a little dangling target out here. It might have moved over to the right a little bit, but we're still going in that direction. But um, I can find out if, 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 if the group needs. But it was EPA standards coming down from the federal level. Um, yes. And I don't know that they've been fully adopted yet, but I know it's out there. Um, because I don't remember the exact language she was using, Scott, whether it was they are going to be the new criteria or these are the recommended new mm -hmm. criteria. Um, I was under the impression that the fecal coliform was going to go to the coliform. That's what so we've been expecting that one. That, and, and, and most, because that's been a big argument. Most states, oh, well, a lot of states are already using it. Correct. So I don't think it's coming. So the ammonia, though, I, I think you're right. I don't, I don't know. Uh, although it was said within the same context. It had to do with like, toxicity to snails and mussels. Snails and mussels. That's, that's right. right. I, uh, the new standard is uh, the red right now. But the reason why I mention that is because I just want the, the group to understand as you're reading through the implementations on water quality and what we have decided that we, we might would like to do is that that could be changed. So the, this water quality stormwater really highlights the 319 projects, the non-point source pollution projects that have been going on in the region. And these are all projects that funding was awarded since plan adoption. So the plans were adopted in um, in the fall of 2011, and so this is funding that occurred after that time, because we could go back further and have a whole bunch more projects. We wanted to, we're, we're focusing just on since plan adoption. And then the other piece included in this is um, the over $8 million that NRCS um, has implemented in water quality BMPs as part of their cost sharing program. Um, so that, that's put in here too. So, um, again, these are project descriptions for 319 grants, um, and so if y'all want to take a look at those, one of, these, one of the things that I've realized that I need to do is either put in a map to show where these are, or make sure I indicate the counties that these uh, streams span. So I will go back and make that um, make that addition to this section. We're going to need to bring it not just with stormwater and all that, not just quality but flooding issues that come with it that all, all the maps with quality but yeah. I, I think the EPD and EPA are more worried about the opposite end of that spectrum low water crime than they are necessarily flooding but I, I think well, for us, some of these 
appears would have, and we all know that Rusty Eagles sure appreciate that as, as we built in our urban development, you know, with all the rooftops and parking lots and so forth, and somewhere like Pittsburgh, right on the headwaters of the New River, we created, you know, with, by not having the whole premise potential requirements and all that, it's got to be built in policies to deal with that. Critical part of our planning, those policies where you build, you know, those types of things into the planning. Oh, which I'm glad Ray didn't hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he can tear you up about that. Yeah. He, he, he gives about us a hard time about this saying that they tend to put water, water down on about like flood them out. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I agree. But yeah, uh, I mean, you know, we have, we have right close to where I live. Near the south of the hospital, and put a uh, you know, two million dollar uh, funding of a detention yeah. that had to be put in to deal with the uh, flooding issues that were there. That were also then adding pollution issues to the river. Correct. Yeah. And I think that's those those <coughs> as far as stormwater goes. I think that's the reason why that's lumped together because yeah. they are they're not mutually exclusive. But I one is. Yeah. But I think you have to build in the thing that there's got to be those policies and those regulations before you mitigate that for the future by building it. It's fairly restrictive right now. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't hardly build anything anymore without a right. disturbance mm -hmm. permit. But one of the things that I think is probably going to happen is, as the Corps of Engineers does these studies, the flood maps get amended. We're also going to see much more rigid requirements about how calculate and accommodate stone water, it's going to become much more restrictive and much more expensive. You're and right. That will immediately be passed on to developers and people who are building. I can tell you right now, I, I developed 25 acres. I got 46 lots and I had to put in three potential uh, potential public. So there, there's there's infrastructure already restrictive. there, but it's going to get uh, and it should. Uh, it's going to get a lot, lot more you expensive. Know, you're going to pay a lot more to fix it like Well and it, it All sorts of implications and relationships there, but, uh, but it's, I think it's going to get done for us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I just I, I wanted to sort of uh, speak up the reading in the water quality stormwater. It was primarily so to, to the quality, but I think we've got to deal with quantity. I think that's good. And it, it's both parts, and they overlap. I mean, if you start flooding, you're going to have quality. The problems that we have right now, you're dead on. Our infrastructure was built you know, 30, 40, 50, 80 years ago, and we're now dealing with uh, you know, 10 times more impervious surfaces and higher runoff. And, and it's it's yeah. tough. It's, it's no. tough. On, it's tough on the taxpayers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's always going to be cheaper. To well, it, we had one situation where the policy was going to the ones that you can't increase runoff more than you know one half percent or something. But what that didn't embrace is the fact that you build a parking lot and you can look, don't just look at service and filling in some space where water was, you, if you look at just the surface, you, you didn't increase the runoff that much, but you in the meantime filled in some hole in here right. that displaced some water. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a, you really got to be thinking of the one of the things that has changed the last couple of years is when we go to build something now and we calculate stormwater, we have to calculate it as if everything is raw land. I mean, one, it's totally not in purpose. Even though there may be 60% coverage in pavement and rooftops and so on and so forth, we have to calculate it now as if there is no impervious surfaces, and then we have to calculate everything we're doing plus what's there. So we make you know, renovation projects or addition projects, which happens all the time for municipalities. We may have to absorb the cost of what has previously happened in order to get permit. And it's and those it's just the way things are nowadays. It's the same way about your you know your 
repaying for utility, uh, you know, aging infrastructure for the water pipe, the sewer pipes, and so forth. It's, it's got to happen, otherwise we're just going to get inundated with. You do it, you don't build it into that to the truck is done. Everybody pays. It is. It's, 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 it's. Well, I, I think the water quality and stormwater issues might be um, more EPD issues, but for us as a council, we might want to include um, volume. We can certainly do that. I was going to ask if there's a if there's a project, Joe, you mission one. Um, I don't know if it's happened within the since plan adoption. It doesn't have to be something that was in the plan or called for in the plan, but if there's something that's happened in the last two or two and a half years that have been, that's addressed the quantity, um, I think that'd be great to include something. I um, think it would be too. I don't think it's completely relevant to our mission. I'd ask you one other question. How many times have you seen a stormwater pond next to a highway? Still impervious surface, it's still oh, runoff. And it has been impervious, so. Yeah. And the, you know what I'm saying, I know oh. that you had a surface, the infield that you put this displaced the water or places that it had. Well, and I'm going to put on my Andy Stone hat right here, but you know, if Andy was here, he'd tell you that all the issues where he's from is about standing water and not runoff. So if you fill up a hole, that's more water. I mean, that's, that's right. everything standing. Exactly. So you may not have. If you just look at the surface, you didn't accelerate that much, but you you removed the locations where the water could be had. Or skeeter could be. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Okay. We'll Moving look, along. Yeah. We'll look to identify a stormwater quantity project yeah. to include in the state. 